Hey guys, welcome back to another new video. Today I'm currently in New York, as you can probably tell. I make this series on this channel called I Try To Blank Like Blank, and basically what I try and do is I break down and try to recreate a certain aspect of one of my favorite creators. So recently I did the Den Mace intro one where I broke down his intro and sort of recreated it with my own personal style. But I thought for today's episode, I would do it on Sarah Dietschy's vlogging style. It's a good creative challenge to sort of copy um, another skill or something that a, another creator is doing to teach yourself like what aspects of that process you like and could want to incorporate into your own videos in your own unique way. I'm going to be breaking down Sarah Dietschy's style when it comes to how she makes a vlog. So I'm going to go and ask someone who knows a little bit about Sarah's style to get a little bit of insight into how she makes her videos. I guess for this angle, yeah, so stay like right there. Because that might be my awkward if there's like a little nose just. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hi! <laughs> so, I just have a couple questions, sort of like dissect a little bit your creative process. So, what do you come up with first when you think of an idea? So, it's changed drastically just because of the nature of YouTube. So, now I do not make a video unless I have a title thumbnail. Okay. I'll still like stay true to what I want to share and uh, once you click on the video I'm going to satiate that that need of the, the thumbnail and title out the gate I need to make sure I address the thumbnail title because mm -hmm. that's YouTube, right? So you, yeah. you have to kind of cater to the platform the the thing that I think has always been the center of my videos I want the majority of my video to be out and about maybe with other people I want to share other people's creative process because I think in the beginning it just came from my own curiosity. I wanted to know how people do their their cool creative things and where yeah. they do it. Do you do you want an exclusive? Do you want to hear Ooh. like I literally have uh -oh. my phone. I literally have like Do you just have a giant list on your phone? Yeah, 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 yeah. So especially during December, it's just mm -hmm. it's cool videos are crazy. Basically I just do it in my notes like mm -hmm. that. Giving a computer away. Mm -hmm. Intel SpawnCon. And then them like all these random yeah. titles and that kind of helps me structure out the hardest part of the video which mm -hmm. is the title do you focus more on the chronological order I think for me it's it's different like half of the stuff I'm telling a very obvious narrative and there's mm -hmm. a story to it yeah and then half of it is just straight up YouTube video I want it to be fun I want it to be entertaining those videos where I am telling more of a story whether it's mine or another creative um, I do try to tell somewhat of a chronological mm -hmm. story and work things in. Something that I used to do a lot when I, I told a lot of, whether it was like a week in Greece, let's put that in 10 minutes or three yeah. minutes. Basically, I would do kind of like sunrise to sunset. So even if you're showing 10 days of footage, mm -hmm. you need like a coherent thread that people can follow um, to stay interested. But sometimes like YouTube videos are just YouTube videos. Yeah. You're like, I got Noobie's attack, let's go test it out. <laughs> That sound. No. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Whatever. We caught it. It's good. Yeah. My earlier stuff, I think, is way more defined, um, mm -hmm. in that I love motion. I love like glitchy stuff. So, in order to like add energy to the videos, um, I'll just do really fast-paced editing. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't fit the YouTube style for everything. Yeah, so. I was gonna ask you like about. I guess you could call it like B-roll. And you do, like you do do those like sort of really fast. I was doing slow motion before Peter McKinnon was on YouTube. Uh oh. <laughs> Just kidding. Especially to your music, you mm. do a lot of punches or yeah. like glitches and stuff. And I think that's something that's easily recognizable as your style. Mm. So definitely oh, like you. try and mix <laughs> that in. <laughs> yeah. Well, because it adds it adds energy, right? Yeah. Okay, 
Sorry to interrupt that B-roll footage, but in this video, I want to kind of recreate Sarah's style. So, the B-roll you were just watching was more sort of my style. I'll do the faster B-roll as well, but I was just feeling more of like the, the epic music, you know, like slower cuts. But Sarah's style, a lot of the time, like she said, is a lot faster, a lot of glitchiness almost, and her music that she chooses is also normally a lot more fast paced. I'm going to be re-editing that b-roll segment you guys just watched, um, trying to emulate Sarah's style. Let's get right into it. I have my computer right here and I'm gonna go through this whole process with you all. Before I even get started editing at all, I need to choose the music. I'm looking for more of a like high energy, a lot of different beats so that I can, you know, do all those quick cuts. And now I'm going to chop up this song for however long I want it to be. I'm probably gonna go for like 15 to 25 seconds. Now, instead of, you know, having these longer shots, I kind of want to have more glitchiness this time. Instead of like switching to different shots, now I'm doing a lot of like zoom ins. Like I will do punch ins and punch outs, but normally they are to just accentuate something and they're not very dramatic. I need to implement a lot more speed ramping into this video. As Sarah said, she likes to use movement to make it more interesting. Um, so definitely trying to keep things moving, using the more upbeat music and you know, having those different beats in the music to be able to really accentuate the B-roll. So I'm gonna play the new Sarah inspired B-roll now and here you go. Is there anything else that it wouldn't be like one of your vlogs if you didn't include it? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I said I guess I have two categories, but I kind of have like three categories. I would okay. say one is more documentary focused, mm -hmm. like docu-series style where I'm highlighting someone else. Mm -hmm. Two is kind of that fast paced like vlog or travel. And then three is just straight up YouTube, like being funny, <laughs> like <laughs> awkward cuts and yeah. stuff and kind of using humor more. It always works this way. The stuff that you wish got the most attention doesn't, yeah. right? And so I think what I'm most proud of is just my old docu-series, like Creative mm -hmm. Spaces TV, where I'm not even in the videos. Like it's literally just like me taking 50 minutes of interview footage, a ton of B-roll of people doing their creative thing, whether they're painters, they're business owners, they're filmmakers, and making a cohesive 10 minute story out of it. Like, I think a lot of people can edit YouTube style, right? Yeah. But I think very few can, um, I'm like tooting my own heart right now. It's super late. But I'm like, it took, it took me a while to get yeah. to the point where I could tell a cohesive story with like a ton of footage, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what helped me is telling other people's stories before I told mine. I don't believe we have to do anything in specific. Just like, okay. I the art of the I'm thumbnail, sure. okay. girl. The thumbnail's <laughs> always the best part. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's actually kind of funny because when Sarah and I were hanging out, we were talking and she was like, yeah, this is kind of funny because you're sort of, you know, dissecting my creative process when that's what I normally do. When I was filming her and throughout this process and when she mentioned that, I was like, oh my God, like that's what this video is. What Sarah got started doing and what she still like loves to do now is documenting the creative process of other creators learning a little bit more about their creative process and that's what i tried to achieve through this video so flipping it a little bit this time sarah is the is the one who is being interviewed but if you guys enjoyed that video thank you so much sarah for inviting me to your office in new york to hang out and create something awesome it was so much fun and i learned a ton if you guys like this video and want to see more make sure to give it a big thumbs up and click that subscribe button and i will see you next tuesday with another new video bye